Hey guys and welcome to this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri. My name is Lauri Laukkanen and I'm one of the editors at SLR Lounge. You can also find me on Facebook at Lauri Laukkanen Photography. In this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri, we are going to be taking a look at sharpening in Photoshop. We're going to talk about the high pass filter, we're going to do, talk about the unsharp mask, smart sharpening, and we're talk, going to talk about the pros and cons of each of these different ways of sharpening. With that said, let's get started. So here you guys can see an image that I created a few days ago and now what we're going to do is sharpen it using the different techniques that I will teach you. So the first technique I'll teach you guys is using the high pass filter. So how that works is we're going to duplicate this layer here, pushing down command and J. And then we go down to filter, other and high pass. We choose a radius that we like. I'd say somewhere around four to five maybe looks good here and we click OK. Now, um, when we're sharpening an image, a good thing when using the high pass filter is to uh, desaturate the high pass filter. That way we don't uh, change the colors of the image at all when doing the sharpening. So we use the high pass filter and now pushing down command and U will open up the hue and saturation panel and we can pull down the saturation of this layer and click OK. Now, when we sharpen the image, the colors do not change. Then uh, we can change the, or what we need to do is we need to change the blending mode from normal down to soft light or vivid light, depending on what kind of sharpening we are going for. I'll show you guys what the soft light looks like. So we're going to change the blending mode down to soft light. And as you can see, when I turn this layer on and off, what it did, it just sharpened the overall image. We'll just zoom in. Uh, here a hundred percent so you guys can see how it just sharpens up the whole image if you want it to sharpen even more to kind of give an aggressive sharpening to the image you can change the blending mode to vivid light which will give you a much more aggressive sharpening uh, it makes the darks darker bright and the highlights a bit brighter as well at the same time uh, so that's probably the easiest way of sharpening an image I typically use the soft light blending mode as that gives us a nice soft uh, sharpening. But then um, this is what you can use when doing an overall sharpening. But uh, what I usually tend to use it, uh, or to do is what I first do is I sh sharpen the image overall. And then I copy the same uh, high pass layer again, so Command J, and apply a black layer mask on it. And now I do a detailed sharpening on the areas that I want the viewer to really focus on. So I'll uh, use a white brush and mask in this copied layer mask on the areas that I want to sharpen. So this gives us a nice detailed sharpen on the areas that we want to focus on. In this case, the eyes, the lips and the nose. So this would be the first very easy way of sharpening an image. First an overall sharpen without the layer mask and then copying the same high pass layer and just masking out the areas that we want to sharpen even more. So that's the first way of sharpening an image. We'll delete these layers and talk about the next one now. So the other way of sharpening an image that you can do use is going down to filter, sharpen and using unsharp mask. We'll open it up and it opens up a dialog like this. Here uh, you have a bit maybe more control than in high pass but um, this is also like an overall sharpen so you can see a preview here and you can click it on and off and by choosing the amount you want to sharpen let's say like here a hundred percent or let's say even more uh, the image becomes sharper you can change the threshold threshold of the levels and see what works the best for your image usually the larger the radius the worse it starts to look so try to find a radius that works for your image for this image I'd say around 1.4 looks good somewhere around here and just click OK and now it has sharpened the image I'm pushing command Z, command Z so you can see I'll zoom in how it sharpened over the image overall Again, you could do this on a separate layer by copying the layer and then masking out the areas and that way making a detailed sharpen on the areas that you want to sharpen. 
And uh, now finally, the third technique that you can use for sharpening is, again, let's actually just copy this layer, and go down filter, sharpen, and smart sharpen. This is another way of, an easy way of sharpening an image using this dialog here. Again, you can do it the advanced way. You can like uh, control the shadows and highlights and stuff like that. But usually the basic settings are totally fine, totally enough. Uh, this is a good way of making an image that is quite unsharp, much sharper in a way. It uh, gives you a nice control, and Photoshop is quite wise in a way in this that this smart sharpen actually works quite nicely. Uh, again, we have the radius. The larger the radius, uh, the kind of dirtier the sharpen looks like, as you can see in this preview here. So again, try to find a radius that looks and works with yours. 1.6 looks good here. You can choose to remove Gaussian blur, lens blur, or motion blur, depending on what kind of uh, blur, blurs you have the most in the image. For this image, I'd say Gaussian blur works nicely. And again, the amount of the strength of the sharpening that you're applying. So let's say here, let's do a nice 120. This gives a very, very intense sharpening for us. So I'll turn this layer on and off and you guys can see how it's really adding a lot of sharpening into the image. Again, I would probably not do, not do this on the whole image. I'd uh, mask it out and paint with a white brush on the areas that I'd like to sharpen. Like let's say the eyes, the nose, the lips, that's the basic stuff that usually you'd like people to focus on. So I'd maybe make those areas a bit sharper, maybe the eyebrows as well. And that way the image gets a bit more pop and kind of um, you add a new level to the image. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video and uh, as always, if you have any questions or requests for future episodes, just leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you all out. If you enjoyed this week's video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and um, with that said, see you again next Tuesday. Bye.